It's often been argued that less than 11% of JSC listed companies have women leaders. The interesting fact about the world that we live in post-recession is that women are now the drivers of growth. It's believed that a lot of the jobs that were lost in the recession were male jobs in the banking and manufacturing space and that recovery will come from women who will be spending and earning somewhere in the region of five trillion dollars collectively. Nongululelo Nyembezi Heta is one of these women. She's the CEO of Arcelor Mittal, South Africa, the largest steel maker here in Africa and she's our captain tonight. How do you feel when people look at you, recognize your accomplishments obviously in business, but profile you as a woman, as a woman of a JSC listed company? Is it important that we acknowledge that? No, not particularly. Um, I mean, I am a woman and I'm <laughs> not <laughs> intending to change anytime soon. So that, that part of it actually doesn't matter very much to me. Um, I'm an engineer by, by uh, training, so I have been in an environment where for the first two seconds, people have to just kind of get used to the fact that it's, <laughs> a, it's a female. In fact, we had a, a female captain in our little charter plane last, last night, and, and, and people still, even Startled today, them. need just a few seconds to, to get over themselves. But I don't really, I can't honestly say that I have been dealt with on any basis mm -hmm. other than what I had to say and what I think, and so I think people get over that bit very quickly. I mean, we're talking about a post-recessionary environment and where the growth is going to come from, and we're told that immediately it's going to come from uh, services industries, for instance, community uh, type uh, jobs, social services, and that's where you find a lot of women. And collectively within the emerging market space, we're talking $5 trillion to be earned and spent by women globally. Is that a re realistic figure? Well, I think that women account for the largest part of growth in terms of incomes today. Yeah. So although men still hold the biggest share of the, the, the public right. purse yeah. or, or the private purse rather, women account for the for a bigger and bigger share of, of growth. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, in fact, I think one of the, of the um, publications did a, an article about women being the biggest actually emerging market on the planet yeah. today because they do represent this um, just exploding growth of disposable yeah. income. So I agree with you that um, the numbers become boggling very, very quickly, whether it's five trillion or 10, yeah. I, I don't know, but it certainly is a big sum of money. But if we just step back to the sectors, uh, if you go to China, for example, or, or even, even other uh, countries Within, within Asia, you'll find th there is a huge number of women working in factories. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Chinese maybe are teaching us that women are very good at repetitive uh, um, type of stuff which requires a meticulous attention to yeah. detail. So there is nothing to say we shouldn't be seeing more and more women enter our factories. And in fact, right. at Aslamita South Africa, in the latest crop of new learnerships that we've taken on, we've had an, an unbelievable mm -hmm. proportion of women. Then there's a bit of a disconnect because I'm talking here about statistics that come from organizations like the Business uh, Women's Association and despite all the attempts at gender parity in South Africa, not a lot of listed companies have women leaders. I mean, you're held up as the beacon of light. Uh, that's just one of you in a sea of women who are active in an economy. What's the problem here? Well, I think the problem is time, um, because women essentially are entering as relative n uh, newcomers in a space that's been dominated by men for a very long time. Now, how many companies are uh, on the on the JSC listed on the JSC? Maybe 600. So there aren't even very many men uh, mm -hmm. leading them. If you're thinking of a population of 44 million people, maybe half of them w w uh, of working age. So you're not actually going to find very many women because the pool from which they were drawn in the first instance was quite small. Fast forward 10 years, the picture is going to look very different. So where I'm looking now is on the layers, maybe one level, maybe two levels mm -hmm. below CEO, to really try and project forwards as to what will happen in the future. Right. And from my perspective, the future is going to look far more exciting. So it's not an area where we should be impatient. Well, are you not being a little changing. bit uh, politically uh, correct and diplomatic? Because there is a sense that you know, as much as regulation and legislation changes because of a constitution, the attitudes of patriarchy are entrenched, certainly in South Africa and more so, it's believed, in the rest of the African continent, and that you probably have had to fight significant battles of perception.
Well, yes and no. Um, you fight battles anyway, uh, you know, like whether consciously or, or unconsciously. I don't think, to be perfectly blunt, that the battles that I have fought are any different from any other black person in South Africa today because in South Africa the bigger hurdle has been the racial one. I think we're only now getting to grips with the gender based one um, and you're absolutely right you can't overturn people's perceptions that they've been you know so they've grown up with mm -hmm. been raised with overnight and that still persists today you just have to open up any any newspaper so I'm not um, by any means putting that aside as a very real hurdle that people have to cross mm -hmm. I'm just saying that there are enough people crossing enough hurdles on a daily basis for there to be a reason for optimism about right. the future um, without necessarily diminishing the, 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 right. the magnitude of the challenge today that racial hurdle talk to us about your experiences because not only has your career uh, been a success in South Africa. You've started a company from scratch, IBM, uh, in Namibia, run that. Uh, you've studied and worked in the United Kingdom. So surely you've had to navigate and process the world as an African woman and constantly had to deal with that. Well, I must say that I've always thought I was just been one of those lucky people <laughs> <laughs> who seem to um, find a way to fit into the cracks. Um, I suppose the fact that um, I studied engineering at a time when not many women, white or black, uh, chose that particular path meant that I didn't have very much competition. So if there is a lesson for anybody else <laughs> out there is try and find something where it isn't <laughs> quite so competitive. Uh, and usually those things require hard work because right. people don't necessarily sign up for that. I personally um, can't say that I've had particular hurdles in my in my way mm -hmm. and so I think I have been lucky and I may be dodging your question but I don't have a better answer than that clearly hard work um, and just being fanatical about excellence and I've always held myself to a punishing standard of, um, of competence and capability. So if you would study for two hours in order to get into a presentation knowing all the two. facts, I'll do it for four. Yeah. Um, so, so luck does need a little bit of, of, a, of a helping hand in terms of hard work, but, but really um, there are people who draw mm. the, lucky, the lucky straw. Who's been your biggest inspiration in business? Um, I knew you'd ask me that question and actually <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> I'm scratching my head because I don't I don't do you know much of the modeling and, and, and yeah. the mentoring so That's I can't enough. I can't say that there is any one particular person that I've drawn an inspiration from rather a whole bunch of people. So talk us through um, maybe three. Well, there are people who um, get recognized for doing something entirely different. Mm -hmm. And Warren Buffett would be one of those people, as you, s you said before, um, I was in, in fund management for a while. And so he towered above uh, other people because he, in his head, became convinced of a certain philosophy, stuck with it through thick and thin, even when other people said he, um, he was wrong. And very often, the people that I admire are people who are prepared to go against the, the conformist uh, view of the day or against the tide. So he's one. Uh, I have to also, I'm going to tell you about people f far from here so that I don't personalize it to people <laughs> in South Africa, although I will mention one in South Africa. Um, I, I would say that um, the story of Steve Jobs is a particular right. inspiration. Uh, and, and with him being so sick, particularly, I think it just brings back that people can rise to a height, fall and rise again, and just be an absolute marvel uh, in, in terms of contribution to the world. I mean, is there anything as sexy as an iPad in this market? Absolutely not. Uh, but, but I think it would be too narrow for me to say I draw inspiration from business people, mm -hmm. because there is no question in my mind that uh, you know, the biggest inspiration would be Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. Again, for a similar reason, albeit a slightly larger one. A, he was prepared to go against the tide to the point where he was prepared to put his own life Interesting. on the line, which yeah. is uh, not something that we get tested at an individual level enough. And so what I said before, you don't know really if you ever got to that point whether you would take that path right. or you would take the easier path. And people who take the harder path but the principal path always fussing. Okay, so from those three examples, you're talking about somebody who's prepared to swim against the tide, you're talking about somebody who perseveres in the midst of adversity, and you're talking about somebody with conviction. Would that sum up 
your personal philosophy as Nongkulu Lago Nyambezi hater? I think pretty much. I think that, <laughs> that comes close. Yeah? Yeah, yeah? And what else drives you, do you think? Um, as I said, excellence in all its manifestations. You know, Aristotle said, excellence is not an act, it's a habit. Mm -hmm. And once you wear it, it becomes, you, you don't quite know who's driving who in this particular mm -hmm. seat because it does drive um, certain behaviors that can other people could find to be uh, slightly too intense and um, in the sense that you start, or at least I do, I start expecting other people to mm -hmm. jump uh, similar hoops. You can be quite annoying to people, to be honest. Do you not think it makes you a bit of a creature of habit? It's the second time you've referred to this element of excellence and habit and just doing things meticulously, repetitively, until it becomes a core, the essence of how you, you, you function and see the world. But do you not think it makes you a bit rigid as you're suggesting a little less creative you don't think maybe your leadership it's possible. needs a bit of creativity it, it's possible um that it, it does that and, and i suppose if you take any one particular um style or attribute to, to an extreme level you give up something in the process mm -hmm. and so i think in anything that you choose you have to be be sure that you're prepared to give up something because ultimately in order to say yes to some things you have to say no to have others have you had to give up a lot um, yes, I suppose in all of this frenetic search for uh, endeavouring to be the best expression of oneself, you don't have more time to do it in than other people. So if you overemphasize one dimension of your life, other dimensions suffer. Now, I'm not suggesting that my family uh, life has suffered, but in a different environment, I could see that I would have liked to have spent a bit more time on those personal things. And I, for example, probably would have spent a lot more time on more spiritual uh, yeah. type searches because yeah. that also fascinates me. Um, I fully believe that people present in, in many dimensions and to just look at the single dimension mm -hmm. also doesn't tell the full story. Professionalism, decisive leadership, meticulous action, a loving mother. These were the views of uh, Nongkululego Nyembezi, hater who is the CEO of ArcelorMittal, leading one of Africa's most strategic assets. She was our captain of industry tonight. Thank you for your time.